More than 500,000 years ago, the ancestors of Neanderthals and modern humans were roaming the ancient world when, for unknown reasons, they split into two distinct species. This is fascinating because of the mysteries and unanswered questions about our older brothers and sisters, the Neanderthals. The most pressing questions may be why and how they went extinct around 40,000 years ago. In this video, we'll uncover the truth about all of the mysteries surrounding the Neanderthals. Recent discoveries of Neanderthals have changed everything we know about these prehistoric creatures. Indeed, our understanding of Neanderthals has changed dramatically over time. Since the late 1800s, we've known that other types of humans lived on Earth. At the time, scientists recognized that fossils found in caves across Europe belonged to Neanderthals, an archaic human species. In the early 1900s, scientists classified Neanderthals as ape-like, simian, and bestial subhumans. Almost everything about Neanderthal behavior is debatable. The first Neanderthal skull was discovered in a Belgian cave in 1829, and the first bones were found near Dusseldorf in the 1850s. In recent years, archaeological discoveries have led to depictions of the Neanderthal wearing shell necklaces and eagle claws, playing the flute, painting on cave walls, inventing technology, diving for clams, hunting great beasts of prey, and ruling over the forest as the king of the north. However, some Neanderthals may have been peaceful vegetarians, a stark contrast to the stereotype of the meat-eating caveman. El Cidron is a cave in northern Spain that housed the skeletal remains of a family of 13 Neanderthals. Physical evidence discovered in the cave suggests that another group murdered and cannibalized this peaceful vegetarian Neanderthal family 49,000 years ago in order to ensure the marauding group's survival. Archaeologists in Spain discovered the remains of a possible family of 12 Neanderthals who perished 49,000 years ago. According to the researchers, the markings on the bones clearly indicate cannibal activity, and the group was most likely killed by another Neanderthal tribe. Morphologically, the El Cidron humans have a large number of Neanderthal lineage-derived features, despite the fact that some traits place the sample on the edge of Neanderthal variability. The integration of El Cidron mandibles into the larger Neanderthal sample reveals a north-south geographic pattern. The cave is located in the northern region, and southern Neanderthals have larger faces with higher to lower facial heights. What's more, we often think of Neanderthals as a single homogeneous group, but recent research indicates that there were significant north-south demographic and cultural differences between Neanderthal groups. Genetic analysis shows that there were at least three distinct geographical groups, Western Europe, the Mediterranean coast, and east of the Caucasus, with some migration between them. In fact, there is evidence of intergroup conflict. A Neanderthal skeleton from La Roche, a Pierrot cave in France, with a healed fracture on top of the skull, most likely caused by a deep blade wound, and another from Shanidar cave in Mesopotamia, with a rib lesion characteristic of projectile weapon injuries. Researchers also discovered an apparent cemetery of six or seven people in La Ferracie, France, a term commonly used in modern humans to denote a corporate group that maintained a distinct social identity and controlled a resource, such as trading or manufacturing. La Ferracie is also located on one of Pleistocene Europe's most productive animal migration routes. So, did different Neanderthal ethnic groups drive each other to extinction? Despite their probable high level of rationality, researchers believe Neanderthal behavior would appear neophobic, dogmatic, and xenophobic to modern humans. Neanderthals had different experiences and ways of being in the world than our ancestors, not only because of culture, but also because of their inherent characteristics. However, anthropologists have speculated that Neanderthals were capable of forming geographically expansive ethno-linguistic tribes encompassing up to 800 people based on the transport of obsidian up to 300 kilometers, around 190 miles, from the source compared to trends seen in obsidian transfer distance and tribe size in modern hunter-gatherers. Yet, the model suggests that Neanderthals would have been less efficient at maintaining long-distance networks than modern humans, most likely due to their smaller population. 
Although the highly fragmented bones of six adults and six children were discovered in a cave, they are thought to have lived and died on the surface before the ground collapsed naturally beneath them. Their demise was bloody, with distinct bone markings indicating cannibalism. Indeed, they all show signs of cannibalism, with cut marks on many bones, including skulls and mandibles. The long bones have been fragmented to extract the marrow, so all of the cannibalism signs described in other Neanderthal sites are present in all of these individuals. The assertion that the group was a family is based on an examination of their mitochondrial DNA, which is genetic material found within animal cells and passed down through the female line. The genetic data showed that the three adult males in the group had the same maternal lineage, but the three adult females had different maternal origins. According to the researchers, at least in this Neanderthal family, the women came from outside the group, while the men remained within the family group after reaching maturity. This model of patrilocality is widespread among modern humans, with men staying at home in many societies around the world, while women are exchanged among tribes. Recent research on the Neanderthal remains discovered at El Cidron has revealed that their diet consisted primarily of pine nuts, moss and mushrooms. This contrasts with evidence from other European locations, which indicates a more carnivorous diet. A diet of pine nuts, mushrooms and moss may sound like modernist cuisine, but it was actually common among Spanish Neanderthals. Researchers studying the teeth of the large-browed hominids discovered that, while Neanderthals in Belgium ate woolly rhinoceros, those further south survived on plants and may have relied on naturally occurring painkillers to treat toothaches. The findings, according to the researchers, are yet another blow to the popular belief that Neanderthals were brutish cave thugs. Neanderthals, unsurprisingly, are doing different things, exploiting different resource and in different locations. It was long thought that Neanderthals only hunted large mammals such as horses and rhinoceros. Yet, Neanderthal remains discovered in Spain's southern Pyrenees foothills between 100,000 and 65,000 years ago, suggest that archaic humans were able to adapt to their surroundings and thrive in harsh conditions before modern humans arrived. The animal bones we have recovered show that they were successfully exploiting the surrounding fauna, hunting red deer, horses and bison, while also eating freshwater turtles and rabbits, implying a level of planning rarely seen in most Neanderthals. The bones at this site are extremely well preserved, and we can see evidence of how Neanderthals processed and butchered these animals. The analysis of stone artifacts reveals that these Neanderthals developed tools to exploit the resources available in the area. They clearly understood what they were doing. They had long been familiar with the area and how to survive there. In a recent paper, researchers and scientists described how they examined ancient DNA preserved in the dental tartar, or calculus, of three Neanderthals from 42,000 to 50,000 years ago. Two of the Neanderthals came from the El Cidron cave in Spain and one from the Spy cave in Belgium. El Cidron's bone assemblage is almost entirely composed of Neanderthal remains with 13 individuals identified. El Cidron cave has seven adults, three males and four females, three adolescents aged 12 to 15, two males and one female, two juveniles aged 5 to 9, one male and one of unknown gender, and one infant. Dental examinations show that the adults were all relatively young at the time of death. What's more, one of the Spanish Neanderthals was known to have had a painful dental abscess, and an analysis of his tartar revealed evidence of a parasite that causes stomach problems in humans. According to the researchers, the unfortunate individual may have attempted self-medication to cope. While previous research has suggested that the El Cidron Neanderthals used yarrow and chamomile, the unwell individual's tartar contains poplar, which contains the active ingredient of aspirin, salicylic acid, and a species of penicillium fungus, implying that the Neanderthals may have had access to a natural source of antibiotics. This could be evidence of more sophisticated behavior in terms of knowledge of medicinal plants. Homo Neanderthalensis a native of Europe's primeval forests, are sometimes referred to as our ancient brothers and sisters. Nonetheless, 
anthropologists consider the birth of the modern human to be an excellent evolutionary leap. But this is not the case with the Neanderthals. Science considers the Neanderthal evolutionary leap to be an evolutionary failure. This flawed leap could have contributed to their extinction around 40,000 years ago. Although this leap was an improvement over their predecessors, as evolutionary leaps are supposed to show, the Neanderthals did not appear to be built for the future in the same way that modern humans are. In other words, the Neanderthals' evolutionary leap from the last common ancestor was not compatible with effective evolution. Nonetheless, the answers to the mysteries surrounding the Neanderthals are clear. In 1856, Hermann Schaffhausen, a German anthropologist, examined the bones of Neanderthal man and concluded that it may have belonged to a barbarous and savage race of people who were wiped out by a more virile form of man. He concluded that the fragments of crania from the Neanderthal surpass all the others in those peculiarities of confirmation that lead to the conclusion that they belong to a barbarous and savage race. Schaffhausen believed that humans evolved linearly from savage to civilized, so he concluded that Neanderthals were savage cave dwellers. Meanwhile, his contemporary, Irish geologist William King, disagreed. King noticed that the skull of this fossil, with its strong, ape-like tendencies, was different from modern man. In 1863, King identified it as a new species, which he called Homo neanderthalensis. Nevertheless, King wrote that darkness characterized the being to which the fossil belonged, and the thoughts and desires which once dwelt within it never soared beyond those of the brute. Fortunately, the idea that Neanderthals were simple and just dragging their knuckles around is a myth that has long since vanished, at least in the world of paleoanthropology. And with that tantalizing statement, we'll leave you ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.